joining us. Give, I'm going to give it a few minutes here to allow everyone to log in. And just so everyone's uh, aware of the uh, Zoom interface, if you look on the bottom here, the chat box, you can post your questions in there or through the Q&A function on the bottom right. Feel free to ask your questions, uh, you know, during the session. I'll be, you know, be sure to answer them uh, as they come through. Perfect. Well, today we're going to, you know, really focus on weed maps. Um, so, you know, I want to welcome everyone today to the Media Gel Podcast, where we cover the latest marketing trends and strategies that are most effective in growing your cannabis store your delivery service, or your cannabis brand. Here at Media Gel, we help cannabis companies ad advertise through SEO, SEM, and programmatic display advertising to increase your revenue. Uh, Media Gel has a compliant ad network of 75,000 plus publishers, including mainstream news sites, meme sites, dating, gaming, and music streaming apps, and they all welcome cannabis ads. I am your host, Guillermo Bravo. And today we'll be discussing how to transition your marketing budget away from weed maps and increase your overall revenue through digital marketing. So today we're gonna to share the truth about weed maps and the steps that you need to take the transition off the platform. And we have four marketing channels for you today that we'll be using for customer acquisition and retention. Uh, so when you opened up your retail store delivery service, you know, you assumed that you needed to be on weed maps to get found. You know, weed maps is the Yelp of cannabis, right? It's been around since 2008. It was really the first uh, platform out there to, to find weed online. So weed maps, you know, sounds ideal for a monthly fee. You get your business or, you know, you get your dispensary in front of new customers, and then they can order through the weed web, mead webs website. Um, but let's really take a, let's really take a dive deep into what you're actually getting from your partnership with Weed Maps and other alternatives uh, to, you know, to reach that same goal of getting customers. So if you want the first spot, first spot on Weed Maps in the key market, you're going to be investing a lot of money, you know, ranging anywhere from ten dollars to $100,000 per month, depending on if you're in like San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, or some of the other major markets. And think about all like when you're you're putting all your money in one channel, like what else could you be doing with that money? And how could you better invest in your brand so that you can own that first party customer data and really build a, a true business presence on the web that ranks far beyond the like pay-to-play model that is with weed maps. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just take a little uh, share my screen here and just gonna show you on the weed maps front like what you're, what you're actually getting here. So Weedmaps' business, business model <clears throat> Weedmaps' business model is really ensuring uh, that you, you place your cannabis brand, you know, delivery service or uh, cannabis store within a local region. So if I'm in San Jose, San Jose and I have a cannabis store and, I'm, and I want to list my business, you'll be listed here. So when you're paying for placement on Weed Maps, you're paying for one of these pins. So Airfield Supply Company, let's just say they spend $10,000 a month to, uh, to get this featured listing. And that's what you're paying for, right? So you're paying for this premier listing to get, in San, and get into the San Jose against each other in order there's a lot of retailers if you want to show up on weed maps you have to bid on those top spots and shell you know, just continue to shell out a lot of money when it comes to the attribution and transparency from weed maps you don't get the full attribution into your return on ad spend and you don't own your customer contact details so those are two big factors that we look at uh, when investing in weed maps and just any general marketing platform Number one, you want to own your customer data. 
Uh, you want those you want those customers to be in your CRM, your point of sale system, and you want to be able to communicate and activate uh, you know, those customers at any time. You know, Weed Maps will typically provide you with the customer's name and phone number only. They, they really don't share the email address with, with you because you got to remember that people have to register through Weed Maps to place an order. So Weed Maps is collecting that last part of information. Um, so you're kind of cut off from the communication with the client unless you have their phone number. Um, and in that case, you you really can't message them unless they opt into marketing messages. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, CRMs and, and email, SMS, and uh, push notifications here later down the line. But feel free, like I said, everyone, to ask questions away, and I'll be sure to address those as they come along. So when you're transitioning away from Weed Maps, you know, the goal is to own your revenue channel, right? You want to see what customers are on your website and then remarket to those customers every time. So some of the things that you would give away to Weed Maps if you're, you know, working with them and things that you don't own yourself would be you're giving up control of your brand when using Weed Maps. Part of this is because you don't own your profile. Weed Maps is collecting money for that pin, as I said before. And then, you know, other dispensaries are on there as well. So there's no loyalty there. You know, a customer can show up to your business profile. Let's just say Airfield Supply. They intend from buying from you. And maybe they see an ad or they see a deal from another customer. Um, so they'll hop on to another store in San Jose. So there's some limitations and competition here. Uh, that you'll be up against because there's a ton of stores in all these markets, as you can see. And it's really just uh, who can outbid the others. <clears throat> Another thing is, if you don't host the menu on your website, you do not own the customer experience. So if I go to the menu here, they'll be shopping through Weed Maps and they'll be getting normalized to the Weed Maps platform. Whereas in, you know, if you go to a a store that say is self-hosted or using like a subdomain or an iframe. Um, those, let's just look at a menu here, order online. <clears throat> People will get more normalized to your, to your shopping experience and say, this is for mission dispensaries in Columbia City. They'll get used to your shopping experience instead of shopping on a third-party platform like WeMaps. And that last part, you know, I want to mention is that, you know, you are, if you're, if you're paying for Weed Maps placement, uh, you're giving them your website traffic, which will eventually lead to Weed Maps outranking your brand uh, through Google search results, which results in lost sales, right? So you may have some lost sales. I'll just show you an example of this. Let's just type in bar, uh, who would have a, let's do Barbary Coast. Cannabis. Yeah, so they're not. Weed Maps isn't ranking on this one. So Barbary Coast is not investing in Weed Maps. Uh, but I'll just show you uh, Airfield Supply, San Jose. So airfield supply is here, and you can see that Weed Maps is just under that. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of domain authority with Google, um, then Weed Maps could potentially outrank you, and then you know take the business away from you. And the same thing goes with Leafly and Yelp. Uh, you know, Leafly and Weed Maps are both cannabis-specific uh, directories and marketplaces, whereas in Yelp and Foursquare and some of these other platforms, they're general, right? from the setup phase to really ensure that you have, let's say, Google Analytics installed or any other third-party analytics programs installed, you'll be able to have true 
revenue, uh, or sorry, true source information for where your revenues come from, coming from. So you can make informed decisions about your business and you know further grow sales. Another thing is you'll pay less for each new customer. Um, so these are all you know, key points that you want to consider when you're trying to transition away from weed maps. So you really need to know your return on ad spend uh, for all your marketing channels if you to even make a decision like this. So as far as a game plan for transitioning away from weed maps, I'm going to go through a, a few items here. So the first is going to be creating a marketing plan, budget, and timeline. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen here and just going to show you uh, a budget for a budget for a marketing mix. <clears throat> Isn't it good that Weed Maps helps us more Google get more Google patients? Okay, so I have a question from the audience before we continue. Isn't it good that Weed Maps help us helps us get more Google page hits? I would say no. Uh, I think Weed Maps is a is a solid channel to use in your marketing mix, but I'd say that you should focus on getting everyone to your website first. So own make sure that you focus on um, building your website, that you have your online menu, and that you're collecting customer information through the website as well. <clears throat> Let's see, where is the right screen? All right, so I'm just sharing my screen here of a, a little marketing mix here, potentially for, for a dispensary. So putting together your marketing plan and budget and timeline is gonna be key. This is just a sample template. I'm happy to share it with anyone after the call if, they, if they'd like. Uh, so first thing is put together your full spend. Uh, so this is just a sample of $84,000 budget for a store. Let's say a one store location, maybe they're doing close to a million or past a million dollars in revenue. I look at some of the marketing channels that uh, are typically used in cannabis. So marketing staff is going to be one, right? So you need a, a, mar a CMO or a marketing manager to, to manage all these campaigns and to digest all the data. And then to share that with C-level or C-level executives or the owner, depending on the size of the store. So marketing staff is going to be one. Billboards is another. This is typically used in, in the cannabis industry, right? Uh, CRM. So whether you're using like a Spring Big or Alpine IQ, Happy Cabbage, all those different platforms are great for uh, customer retention and messaging and reaching out to those to those customers that you have um, in your database. Programmatic display ads. This is a great replacement for traditional billboards. <clears throat> and the reason I say this is, you know, with the lack of ability to track sales with billboards, uh, you know, a bud, bud tender has to ask a customer where they heard about us and they have to say a billboard. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just uh, looking at the different questions coming in. So billboards, yeah, you have the lack of uh, ability to track sales unless the bud tenders ask. And programmatic display advertising is a great way to replace that because you have access uh, to people on all these publications, right? All these mobile apps, all these different places that you would expect uh, to see ads. And then when I think about programmatic advertising, I, you know, I'm scrolling through my phone. I'm, I'm playing games. Like we're in the, on their, you know, it's on your, it might be, we're all competing for the same time. And when I think about programmatic advertising, I think about, uh, you know, like driving down the freeway in Los Angeles, right? So you're driving down the freeway and you're seeing all these billboards uh, throughout the city. That's essentially what programmatic advertising is in a digital form. The only difference is since we're advertising to people directly on a, a mobile, mobile device, we can actually 
connect that impression. So someone's seen that, that billboard or that mobile billboard through a programmatic display ad, and we can connect that to a transaction on your website. And I forgot to bring this up, but here's the different funnels as well. Uh, so marketing staff, no funnel there. Billboards are top of funnel. CRM is middle of funnel or bottom of funnel. Programmatic is top of funnel or bottom of funnel. Uh, next is SEM. And that is paid ads on search engines. So that's going to be um, middle of funnel or bottom of funnel because people are searching. They have intent to buy, right? Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that there is some restrictions on advertising copy and how uh, straightforward you can be with your ads. They You can't say cannabis in your ads. You can't have cannabis on the landing pages. So there's some limitations there. And these budgets, this is a monthly budget uh, for anyone that is asking in the audience here. <clears throat> and I'm going to go through the return on ad spend and return on ad investments for all of these channels as well. Next up, I have SEO, and that's the combination of like on-page SEO, off-page SEO, link building and content. Uh, so after you finish on-page SEO, most of your time is gonna be spent on creating new content and then just getting links from third-party websites. So keep that in mind. And SEO, uh, is mid funnel and bottom of funnel typically we got social media as well social media your budget's going to be spent on uh, maybe a social media manager maybe uh, a content creator graphic designer all that is going to be part of the social media budget uh, this is top of funnel or sometimes bottom of funnel and top of funnel meaning people don't know who you are so they use let's say instagram to find find out about your cannabis brand and bottom of funnel, bottom of funnel, meaning that they already are loyal uh, cannabis, uh, loyal to your brand. And this is just a great way for you to maintain that relationship with them. Same thing with billboards. It's, it's tough to track the sales from social media uh, since it's typically clicks to the website. And from all, from all the data that we have, that typically doesn't lead into a substantial amount of sales. Uh, so we'll get into a little bit more on that. And then marketplaces, Weed Maps and Leafly. This is top of funnel, middle funnel, and bottom of funnel. Uh, you know, say this. The main note between this is you don't own, uh, you don't own your customers. Uh, there's not really a full tr transparency in the sales. You you don't actually get the order IDs, and you can't compare that to your point of sale system. So they're typically only focused on marketing data. And then some other budget here: uh, website design, graphic design. Yeah, I typically just put that under SEO, um, but if you do need some of those resources, you can you can budget them here. All right. Let me transition on over here. <clears throat> All right, so they're just continuing on with some of these other tabs. And uh, this is going to take some take some time to uh, to make sense, but I just wanted to show you some examples on how we actually uh, prioritize our budget. All right, so when I'm looking at uh, a cannabis store here, I put I put the single store single store location under three tiers. So let's say your monthly recurring revenue or your monthly revenue is 250,000 per month for one store, 500K or a million. And this is really to identify like how much you, sh how much you should really be spending on marketing for your business. And I know there's some other factors which we're gonna get into uh, like 280 and uh, high taxes, obviously, uh, but, I want to at least start with the foundation is like, how do you set your marketing budget? So $250,000 store per month, that, uh, that's about a three, $3 million per year. Um, a lot of stores are in that, in that tier. So if we were to invest 
3% of our monthly revenue in marketing, that would be 7,500. If it was 5%, we would be 12,500. And if it was 10%, we would have 25,000 in marketing. And the same train of thought goes for tier two and tier three. So someone generating 500,000 in revenue for their cannabis store or delivery service, these are the different marketing budgets based on a percentage of revenue and the same thing for a million dollar store. And for the sake of this exercise, you know, I'm using more of the tier one uh, budget for, for what I just showed you here, because we're close to $84,000 in, in monthly marketing spend for that. And then some of the other factors, like I said, 280E, high taxes, and then low margins. These are other factors that take in consideration. And then also for your marketing mix, like what are your goals, right? So do you want to focus on search engines on Google specifically to rank? Do you want to focus on brand awareness or your new store? Do you want to, to ensure that people know who you are in your, in your local area? Are you focused on bottom of funnel? Are you, have you already uh, really penetrated a lot of the market and you're just looking to, to maximize that? Are you just focused on sales? Are you focusing on synapse? Like there's a lot of different goals here. And I'm reading your, your, questions here. So you almost lost me the 100K marketing. Yeah. So one note from the audience here, that's good to note for all, most dispensaries will not be bringing in $12 million a year. Yep, exactly. It ranges and, you know, even MSOs, like we work with some, some MSOs and they range all the way from, they range all the way from like a hundred thousand dollar a month store at the lowest, all the way up to a two million dollar store uh, per month. So just keep that in mind when you are prioritizing your budgets here. All right, so Pat, Pat, you have a question. So, any suggestions for a single shop that is only making one hundred fifty thousand a month gross? All right, well, let's just plug those into this formula here and at least get a starting budget. So depending on your budget, uh, say $100, $150,000, is the standard for just business 101 is you should be spending 10% of your revenue on marketing. So that's the first thing, Pat, is I would focus more on the higher end because you're in the customer acquisition phase, you're doing $150,000 in sales. Uh, Pat, what would be your ideal, what would be your ideal monthly revenue that you'd like to achieve, let's say by the end of the year, if you don't mind posting that in the, in the Q and A. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a, a little, uh, marketing strategy for a, for a $150,000 store. So let me just do that right now. And I'll just walk you through the process. 220,000 ideally, okay. So 220,000 ideally, let's, um, let's see, we have, $15,000 to spend. So I'm just gonna do this for a quarter. Give me one second here. So $1,500 per, sorry. That's $15,000 per month for 40, for three months. Let's just say $45,000 the budget. So 15,000 per month. Actually, this is uh, probably a good start. Let me look at this one. All right, so we have $15,000 to spend per month. Uh, so number one, these return on ad spends are, are fairly accurate. Uh, this is across, I think about 400 locations, what we've seen. So, you know, SEO is um, by far the best return on investment. 
Uh, so SEO, it has by far the best ROI for your business uh, to get new customers. And then the CRM, so like a Spring Big Alpine IQ, those are really high as well. Those are close to like a 30 to a 50 return on that investment as well. You know, people are spending anywhere from like a thousand to all the way up to $10,000 a month just on text messaging. So if I were to build out a marketing budget for 15,000 per month, let me just sort this by date. Let me add CRM in here. Let me remove some of these budgets. So 15,000 per month. 15,000 per month is going to, let's see, 15,000 per month. And that is 220,000 sales is where you like to get to. So you like to grow about 70,000. So currently, currently we're at 150. Goal is 220. <clears throat> All right, let's look at let's look at July as a starting point. CRM, I'm trying to think of how many customers you probably have in that. So customers for $150,000 per month. Let's just say 15,000 customers as a guess to message those people on a regular basis, let's say four messages per month, it's gonna be 60,000 messages. Um, I'm just gonna take a make an estimate, but probably around $2,000 you're gonna be spending on your CRM per month. And that's gonna be on the high return on ad spend because these are people that are already your customers. And Pat, yeah, so you're spending 450 a month for Spring Big. Awesome. So I'm going to update that here. Revenue from this is probably close to, yeah, 10%. Uh, 30 times that. So 13.5. Let's look at um, SEO. So SEO is by far the number one uh, marketing channel, let's say, for any cannabis business especially on the retail side and delivery service side. Brands, it's a little tough. It's, 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 not, as, uh, it's not as impactful for your business to, to do SEO for your brand, unless you're just trying to range for some of your product category terms. So I'd probably put uh, 4,500 directly on SEO. And the goal of that would be to rank, uh, Pat, what city... What city is your cannabis store in? Just so I can just do a search for their, for uh, what's available in your area. So the goal would be to, let's just say Sacramento, marijuana store. So Pat is in, he hasn't answered yet. So let's just look at Sacramento. So the goal for SEO would be to rank here in the top three results, which is called the local pack or in the organic search results here. And also the Google Maps, which is an extension of that. So Google My Business is going to be a major, major driver for your business. Uh, we had a partner of ours that was doing some uh, malicious activities on their Google My Business and they were shut down for three months. And they told me that they were losing $10,000 a day by not having their Google My Business profile. So definitely uh, focused on Google My Business for SEO. <clears throat> and I'll get into some real life data and analytics here in a second. Uh, return on ad spend for SEM. So tip pretty much like Google ads with maybe 25% of that going to Bing ads. Let's put in uh, $4,000 from that as well. And then programmatic, let's do $4,000 on that as well. CRM. So these are customer acquisition channels, right? This is customer retention. I would probably increase your CRM cost to about $1,000 per month just to be safe. Because as you increase your customer base, uh, you really want to maximize 
uh, how much your existing customers are spending. So you're going to increase this to 1500 or sorry, a thousand, maybe $1,500 over the course of three months. So that is 15 grand right there. And if I were to invest that 15 grand, I'm just going to do the sum of this for one month. We invest, oh, sorry, 14,000. Generate. Wow, if we if this if we can actually maintain this from the SEO front, we can generate two hundred forty eight thousand dollars in revenue. Uh, one thing I want to uh, make sure I clarify is that SEO is not going to happen right away. This is more of a long term play, so it's going to take three months to to really scale to that level. I would say even six months. Programmatic and and SEM are paid advertising, meaning you just you pay for ads. They can turn them off and on at any time. CRM is really focused on customer retention, get them in the door, get their phone number, email, and uh, you know the ability to segment their, their customer information and then get those messages out through Spring Big and make sure that they're really specific. I have a few questions here and I'll answer them in a, in a little bit here. <clears throat> so what I wanna do is actually look at some live data here, so this is for a partner uh, that I anonymized. And this is a great example because they are using Spring Big as well. So this is for a retailer. Um, and they have about, let's say, 10 stores. I'm not sure exactly how many stores. Uh, but this is a look at their Google Analytics. So if you, if you do have the ability to get your analytics set up correctly, and by correctly, I mean uh, allowing the ability to track your e-commerce conversion rate, your transactions, and your revenue, then that's the first phase. So you want to make sure that you have Google Analytics installed, whether it's through you know, Dutchy, Jane, Timber, Dispense, uh, Shopify, like all the e-commerce platforms offer this. So make sure that you integrate your e-commerce platform with Google Analytics. That's the first phase. <clears throat> Second, let's just take a look at where this revenue is coming from. And this is a great way for us to prioritize where we're spending our money. So direct traffic, that's people who already know the store. They already know the company and they're just going directly to uh, the website or they have a bookmark. So 45% of their traffic is coming from direct traffic. So those are all existing customers most likely. And then next, if we go down the list, Google organic, this is people who search for cannabis store and then click on one of these results. So they click on one of these results and then they go, they go to your cannabis website. So that would be an organic click. Let's just look at GMB. So that's, uh, we added UTMs for this partner so that we can track uh, Google My Business separate from that of organic traffic. So when you type in San Francisco dispensary, instead of clicking here, people are clicking to the actual Google My Business listing and then coming to the website. So that's the actual experience of someone uh, coming from Google My Business and then going to your, to your website. And then from there, they can proceed to the shopping cart. And then Spring Big is right here. So Pat, great point on the uh, on the CRM, and glad that you're you're using a great partner like Spring Big. Uh, you can see that just under nine percent of your traffic is coming from Spring Big, and this is typically called something else. I'm trying to remember what the name of it is, um, but if you add a UTM to your your link URL on Spring Big, you can actually track this a little better, and we definitely recommend that. So 8% of the traffic is coming from Spring Big. 8% of the traffic conversion rate is really high, 10% transactions and revenue. So their Spring Big supports about 5% of the revenue. So $296,000 for this partner of the 5.5 million. So just looking across the line, these are the top 10 sources. You can see that direct traffic, existing customers, you know, 45% is coming from that channel. 
Google Organic versus Google GMB. So GMB has one, two, three, four, five of the top 10 results. And we have Google My Business profiles set up for each city. And then this is actually Spring Big as well. So My Wallet Deals, that's a that's your loyalty wallet. So it's actually a little bit more than uh, if we combine these two, a little bit more is coming from Spring Big. And the last one is going to be SEM. So this is Google Ads or Google CPC. So this is a little over 1% of the, of the traffic to the website with a 8.5% conversion rate and $31,000 in revenue. So just looking at the top channels for this partner, and this is pretty common across dispensaries that we work with is SEO is going to be your number one traffic source uh, after direct traffic. And then Spring Big is going to be the Spring Big or any of the other CRMs are going to be another uh, great way for you to get people back to the website and get them to buy. So this is a, just a great overview of where your money's going to go and what you should expect from that. <clears throat> so then just taking a step back, uh, we have a few questions here. So how do you prevent fraudulent reviews and rankings and ratings, uh, rankings from tanking your Google ratings? So number one, uh, you're always going to get fraudulent reviews. So you want to make sure that you document these and that you provide those to Google and report them. So that would be the first thing is report them to Google. Uh, second thing is if you if they have like a, a personal name, like if they say someone's name, like a bud tender or the owner or something like that, you can actually just have that removed fairly easily because they're not allowed uh, to call people out by name on that front, especially in a negative manner if it's, if they're, you know, saying negative things about someone on the team, they can get that removed. Um, our recommendation would be sure, be, uh, be sure to manage a 4.7 or higher Google rating. Uh, be sure to respond to all those reviews and do your best to, if possible, have people revise their reviews so that you can you know, maintain that 4.7 rating. We have another question for brands here. So what's the best ROI for brands? So that's a tough one. So brands, you know, historically don't, have not had many uh, advertising channels to leverage for, uh, for advertising. So right now, uh, what we're seeing is, uh, from my conversation with Joe Hodas too, from Wanna Brands, events is a big one. Uh, swag is another great way to really get your brand out there. and and gain awareness, PR is another. Um, and then once you want to you know, do real like digital advertising, then programmatic is a great way to do that. Partner maybe with one of your retailers so that you can drive in-store sales there. If you have the ability to do direct to consumer, then you can uh, you know, send people directly to your website and then maybe they can go to the stockist if they need to buy in a retail store or if they, um, if they can just buy directly through you, then that's another option. Let me actually just pull up a few examples of that. Um, all right, let's just look at Buddy's brand. So if I were if I were Buddies and I wanted to promote my brand. Uh, you know, they do have a D2C model here. So if you go to shop now for the brand, it looks like they're using Timber for their menu. Uh, so as a, as a brand, let's say they're in Los Angeles. Yeah, Maywood. Let's say we're in Maywood and we want to promote our brand and really drive sales in store or D2C. This is a great way to do it, right? You the conversation we had earlier about owning your data, owning that first party data. This is another, another method for owning that data, right? Have your own shopping cart and they have the ability to capture that customer information for your brand. And Matthew, yes, I'll, I'll answer your question here in a second. So give me some examples of driving direct sales. Uh, so programmatic would be one. 
if I were, let's say in Los Angeles and I wanted to drive vape pen sales, what I can do is I can just do like a Los Angeles vape, weed vapes. And I want, I'd want to do SEO. So SEO for my product so that we can rank in this area. So when people are searching for vape pens, they get directed to this vape pens category. So SEO is going to help. I don't think it's going to, for brands, it's not going to drive as much growth uh, as a retailer or, or a delivery service. So just keep that in mind. Uh, brand co-marketing co co campaigns are, are a great, great uh, method too. Let me pull one up here for you. <clears throat> All right. All right, let's just look at this brand in Los Angeles. Uh, so they did they did uh, launch a programmatic campaign with us. Uh, and the goal was to drive in-store sales at a retail partner. So they spent, uh, I believe it was 4,500, but let me just double check on this over 30 or 90 days. <clears throat> Give me one second. I'll just look at the impressions here. Impressions. Yeah, so they spend $4,500 over the course of 90 days. So $1,500 a month. And this generated just over a quarter million in impressions, 428 clicks. And then we were able to drive 190 e-commerce sales through their menu and then 96 walk-ins. And this is separate from, uh, from transactions. So I'll just show you kind of that whole flow here. So you can see that uh, we had some ads that we did, uh, Care by Design, boom. We sent them to the artist tree in West Hollywood and we were able to drive in-store sales for this partner for Canacraft. So this is just a great way for you to, to activate a, a campaign uh, for a brand. Juan Hernandez, what is the best way to request PR from local newspapers? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, so number one, you have to have a great story. Um, and unfortunately, like you know, in cannabis, like it's great if it's like social impact brand or unique product, but like there's really, you really have to have the differentiator, like minority owned business or, you know, self-funded family owned, uh, veteran owned, something along those lines. You it has to be a great story because this is earned media. So you're not paying to play, right? So you have to, it has to be a great story that people care about. So that's the, that would be my advice on the, on the PR front. <clears throat> and then just kind of going full circle here with, with the goals. Uh, so circling back to our high level goal, right? So our goal is to get customers in the most economically efficient way as possible, maximize the revenue coming into the store and ensuring that we're getting those customers in our market. So if I'm in, uh, I'm just gonna use San Jose as an example, since we we're talking about that earlier, we're actually just use Oakland. So customers are coming to, number one, they're coming to Google. Right, so cannabis store in Oakland, California. And then they're choosing one of these dispensaries from the top three, right? So 
number one priority would be in these top three results or in the organic search results here. You can see that Yelp and Weed Maps are right below there. And then you have Have a Heart, 510, Harborside, and then Leafly, and some of these other platforms. So number one, I'm in Oakland. I want to get new customers. Google is going to be my number one place uh, to get new customers. <clears throat> and you want to invest in on-page optimization, content, and then link building. So the same way that you would, same way that you would, uh, you know, let's think of politics, like you're getting an upvote for, from someone, from another politician. That's exactly what uh, link, links are from a third-party website to yours. They're giving you a thumbs up on your, and they're saying that you're a trusted resource. So SEO by far is gonna be my number one recommended marketing channel to maximize your revenue and return on ad spend. And if you are not achieving these results, then you'll want to invest in paid ads, right? So I'll just give you the example of what this looks like here. So paid ads, so that, that would be these ads here at the top. So if you don't have the ability to rank organically for this in SEO, then skip the line, right? Pay to play here. And then you can get those people to come to your website as well. So in my, in my opinion, you know, Google is, is going to be the number one marketing channel for you long-term uh, for customer acquisition. So whether you're doing it through SEO or through paid SEM, through paid search, uh, it's really up to you on how you want to uh, invest in each of those channels. But I can say that people that I know that have been investing in SEO for a long time, like they are the, they are the stores that are doing that a million dollars plus, right? Like we work with a lot of those partners on the West coast and they're all spending a significant amount of money on SEO. And then if you're looking for just like traditional advertising, you know, pr programmatic advertising is going to be one way. Uh, so let me give you a, I'll show you some examples of that. But it's those banner ads that I was showing you before. So if you if you're looking to drive sales, looks like this is a four to one for for this campaign. Uh, you'll want to create banner ads. So you have these different banner ad sizes that be shown on you know salon.com, uh, ESPN, Sports Illustrated. Like you can advertise cannabis on those platforms. Great question. Uh, I'll answer that in a second. <clears throat> and you can see a, a little mix of where these clicks are coming from. So we got some gaming websites. You got some chat websites, some meme websites, golf swing, OC register, local publications. So you really have the ability to reach all these people. And, and you can create ads, you know, for all the different markets here. Korea Town, Beverly Hills, Korea. West Hollywood, et cetera. And then I have an uh, anonymous question here from the audience. How do you feel about, about direct mailers? Great point. I forgot to add that in this marketing mix. I'm going to do that right now. Um, so direct mailers, we've actually had some success with it. Um, one challenge with that is that, uh, you know, there's, it's hard to track the return on ad spend there unless you have a, a QR code or a discount code associated with the posts with the mail. So that would be the first thing. I would pair it with a, a QR code or a, um, or a discount code. Uh, when I'm thinking about direct mailers as well as if they scan that QR code, they're going to visit your website. So you want to ensure that you have your pixel on the website so they can do retargeting to those users. So send people, uh, you know, 20% off their next order, uh, you know, directly to their house, get those people to scan that QR code, get them to your website and, uh, you know, hopefully they'll make a purchase, but if they don't, then we can retarget them with ads. But I would say it, it is a solid, uh, solid use of your funds. Uh, we've, we see some campaigns do uh, a couple, like a two to one return on ad spend for direct mailers. And we've seen some that have done, you know, five to one on direct mailers. And 
And that's something we didn't cover much here today. Um, but from, um, from all our partners we're working with, we're looking at a between a two to one and a four to one return on ad spend for weed maps. Uh, so I was looking at a partners yesterday, they're getting about a 2.5 to one. They were spending about $40,000 on weed maps per month, getting uh, close to 90 on the return on ad spend there. And then on the SEO, the SEOs, it's a little, it's a, it's the ROI is high by far, but instead of spending money on advertising, right, you're investing in SEO and then you're reaping the benefits long term of that. So you really have to keep that in mind when you're uh, spending money with SEO, like how, how and when the results are going to come in. Let's say you invest, uh, like we were saying earlier, uh, you invest. $4,500 in SEO for three months, Pat, for your, for your cannabis dispensary that uh, is driving 150,000 per month. Uh, you know, revenue from that, if over time can surpass what you're already doing at the 150,000 per month, but I don't think it's going to take, uh, so 4,500 per month, I would probably say it's going to take close to six months to get to that level where you're generating that much in revenue from SEO or a little bit longer. So just definitely keep that in mind when we're thinking about the return on ad spends for each of these. SEM ranges, uh, California is on the lower side just because of the competition and then just a lot of people bidding on, on keywords. Uh, so we put I put six here as a, an average. That's total for the United States. Uh, East Coast, we're seeing 10, 15 uh, return on ad spend for these. So it just really depends on your state and city. Programmatic, uh, 11 to 1. And that's uh, another thing to keep in mind. So 11 to 1 return on ad spend for programmatic. CRM, it's really going to depend on your how much you're spending with your um, with your platform partner, uh, how well you're utilizing it. Like, are you creating segments for each of your customers? Are you creating really uh, tailored text messaging and email campaigns to them? Um, are you really using text messaging and push notifications to the, in, in the best way possible, right? Um, leveraging email as well. So, you know, it's hard to really, gauge what the return on ad spend is for CRM, but it's it's high. Like SEO and, and your CRM are both going to be extremely high uh, return on ad spends and just really great uses of your money as a whole. Uh, they're going to fart outpace any of the uh, results from the other platforms. But then keep in mind that uh, some of these are for customer retention. Some of these are for client uh, customer retention uh, acquisition. Do SEO investments compound over time or is it something you can easily lose if you don't pay monthly? That's a phenomenal question. Uh, so SEO, invest, SEO investments do compound over time. So as you're investing in your website and you're investing in your, your digital assets, that's something that you own. So if I invest 5,000 a month for the course of a year and then I stop spending money on SEO, it's not going to just drop off right away. You may see start to see like a slight decline in SEO, like organic traffic, but uh, it's not a it's not just a quick drop like that. So you can start to pace it off, kind of actually the same way as weed maps. So if we're spending aggressively uh, with weed maps, let's just look at a sample campaign here. Look at a tier three. So let's say. Um, all right, here we go. Let's say that we're spending $30,000 a month on weed maps uh, and getting that four to one return. We're generating $120,000 for that month. If I transition that same $30,000 and I let's say reduce it to 10 grand, uh, we're going to drop that to $40,000. So I'm losing 80,000 in revenue from that 20,000 investment. And that's going to come from an increase in programmatic. So we can increase this from 2,500 a month to 12,500 per month to see some of those sales coming in. And we can also increase our SEM budget from 10,000 a month to 15,000 a month. So we'll get 
uh, another $30,000 there. And then SEO, increase it from 10,000 a month to 15,000 a month. So we're another 15 or 150 grand coming in from that channel. Uh, so you can see just the overall, the budget has stayed the same, but the revenue has increased from, oh, Sorry, I'm trying to trying to see. Uh, oh, there it is. 597,000 in revenue for that month, all the way up to 800,000 for that month. So there's just ways that you can toggle your marketing spend between the platforms. And in the end, you know, it's it's really do what do what works best for your cannabis retail store. Like whether you're Paul, you're doing 150,000 per month. Like we should chat and we should put together a strategy on how to get to that 220,000 per month and what it's actually going to cost to get it, get you there because all these, it's, it's not cookie cutter, right? So we want to see which things, uh, like which marketing channels are really going to move the needle in your city. And that's another thing is that this is all market specific. So if there is a, if you have a cannabis store in San Francisco, your budget is going to be different than that of, uh, Fresno, right, or Sacramento, or a small, smaller rural city. Uh, so when I'm looking at these different tiered budgets, I look at you know metropolitan area as a top you know, tier three, uh, highest revenue, highest investment, highest competition. Uh, tier two is going to be probably in a mid mid sized city, and then tier one is going to be in a rural town. Let's say uh, I'm from Northern California, so let's say like Ukiah, so an hour north of San, uh, two hours north of San Francisco. Uh, there's less competition, but the the strategy is going to change. Instead of targeting with a three within a three mile radius of your store, maybe maybe you'll be targeting uh, within a thirty mile radius of your store. So there's all these different factors that come into play when you're trying to prioritize your marketing mix. And the main thing is, you know, just just do a lot of A/B testing, right? Like for one quarter put more money in SEO and throttle down weed maps or put more money in your CRM and really focus on that and really uh, ensuring that customers have the best experience when they're in, when they're uh, interacting with your business. Uh, maybe try some SEM campaigns for your different locations. Uh, give a shot at a direct mailer campaign and, and all these things have a different place in your marketing mix and they all change, right? Like me, weed maps is, is, uh, serves its purpose, right? Like WeMaps is great for top of funnel for brand awareness. If you're a new store uh, and you want, really just want to get traction, like that's a great way to get in front of cannabis consumers. Same thing with Google and using search engines. So just, just make sure that you're aware of like the purpose of all these different channels and the timeline between them because they do have a, a shelf life, right? Like we talked about before, like the, the authority of your website for SEO is going to compound over time and you're if you stop spending on money on SEO, it's not going to drop off completely. That's not the case with weed maps or or SEO, SEM or programmatic campaigns. If you stop paying for ads, like you're not going to get any revenue or traffic from those. So, really looking at the different purposes of each of these channels and uh, prioritizing your marketing mix in that way. What are the top three things to do for an online brand to increase sales? That's a great question. So top three things for online brand to increase sales. Uh, first thing is you're gonna have to focus on top of funnel. So if you're a new brand or you don't have market penetration, you'll need to sp spend money on probably programmatic advertising and be my top choice for top of funnel. Uh, then you can also run a Google ads display campaign as well, uh, but those have to be lifestyle focused. So if you're just looking for top of funnel, I want people to know about Canacraft in, in Nevada, let's say. Let's run a campaign, a traditional uh, banner campaign uh, to get people aware of the brand. Uh, so that's one, uh, one type of channel, but I would, I would use programmatic and SEM both to increase awareness. Uh, another channel would be if it's, if you have a brand, I would follow the same format as Buddies. I would create a D2C platform or at least a website. 
so that you can capture customers' information here. So like looking at buddies, whether you want to shop directly or if you have like a pop-up where you can capture customer information and build your own customer list, I would highly, highly encourage you to invest in that. And I'll just show you an example of one of our partners up in New England. So I would recommend doing this for a brand. So when someone comes to your website, when someone comes to your website, ask them if they like to be a VIP um, loyalty member for your brand. And then they can get access to these different product drops or you know, like strain drops or events that are at the local retail store. So I would ask for their name, email address, phone number, and zip code. Zip code's great because you can use this to activate uh, your programmatic campaigns, your Google Ads campaigns, and also just segment your customers by where they are in the, in the state that you're in. And if there's multiple regions, you can, they can choose what region they're in. And then make sure they have this, you know, for, by providing your phone number and email address, you consent to receiving marketing messages. So that's a, another key factor you need to have in there. <clears throat> Let's see, another way. So we got one more for your brand. Well, we already talked about it. I mean, programmatic, but I would do a direct uh, uh a co-op campaign with a retailer. Uh, I did just chat with Spring Big earlier today and uh, they have a brand marketing campaign that they can run. And same thing with Jane, they can run brand marketing campaigns too. So if you have a brand and you're in California, you know, leveraging some of these other marketplaces or platforms that have first party data is another great way. So let's say, uh, say if I have a cannabis edibles brand in California, I can uh, advertise through Jane, through everyone who's bought cannabis edibles over the last six months. And uh, in Spring Big, I can log into the platform, the brand marketing platform there. And then I can choose all the stores in California um, who have the Spring Big, uh, who use Spring Big. And then you can go sort through that. And then you can see, uh, you can choose the retailers you want to advertise through. And then what you can do is you can uh, create a MM, MMS message, like an image or animated GIF. And then you can get, provide that to a retailer and then allow the retailer uh, to launch a campaign with, like, with you. And I believe um, that's something you just pay directly to Spring Bank. So that's just another idea is you just have to remember that uh, Dutchy, Jane, like all these market, uh, Spring Big, Alpine IQ, like all these platforms, they have all that first party uh, cannabis consumer data within their systems. And it's really up to you to, to reach out and see if there's ways to activate that. So those are the three ways that I would do this digitally is programmatic campaign, uh, whether it's running direct to consumer or a co-op campaign or a brand awareness campaign. Those are the three ways I would do it uh, for that. I would also run a Google ads uh, display campaign. This is a lifestyle type of campaign that can be seen in like a Gmail, YouTube, or Google apps on your phone. Uh, I would focus on your website, uh, really driving people to your website, acquiring those customers yourself. And then, uh, you know, if you have the scale to do this, even uh, launching your own CRM for your own brand, so that you can message people if you know you have a, a product drop. I know J uh, Jeter's did a great job of this and selling out all their uh, custom packages they had uh, actually a couple of weeks back. So you can use a CRM to email, text message, do push notifications to the, your customers, uh, whether you're driving them in store or directly to your website. So there's a lot of ways that you can advertise your brand and be sure to, to reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to help and provide any insights I can. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Guillermo Bravo. I'll post it in the, um, in the Slack here. You can also just visit us at uh, mediagel.com and just go to the contact form and, and send me uh, send us a message. I posted these in the Zoom chat. Is there any more questions that anyone has before we log off here? Thank you everyone for their questions. They were very helpful. And thank you for logging in today.
And um, you know, just as a recap, MediaGel, we can support you in advertising through SEO, through SEM, and through programmatic advertising. Uh, we can openly advertise cannabis, and we have written permission from all these publishers, you know, ESPN, Rolling Stone, uh, Sports Illustrated, Salon.com. They've all agreed to allow cannabis advertising, and it's a great way for you to introduce your brand uh, to cannabis, cannabis consumers. Uh, once again, my name is Guillermo Bravo, logging off here uh, with MediaGel. See if there's any more questions. Awesome. No more questions. Well, thank you, everyone, and thank you for logging in today.